Hey guys, welcome to a super rainy day here, upper state New York. I'm actually not that far from Niagara Falls. I'm at the Gates of Heaven Cemetery and uh, I'm here checking out the final resting place of Jennifer Bolander. Now we're gonna get into the story. I'm gonna show you her, I believe it's her cremated remains. Get out of the rain for a second. So anyway, so I'm gonna show you guys her cremated remains here that are obviously preserved here in this beautiful mausoleum. We're then gonna go to the actual murder site, which is like a pedestrian walkway bridge. Again, not that far from here. Obviously it's pouring down rain, so I may have to do some of this uh, talking in a voiceover as it's really hard to carry a camera and umbrella and trying to not get soaked and all that. So anyway, Let's get into the story. If you ever want to check out her final resting place, it's not that hard to find. You'll drive past the office and there'll be two different mausoleums across the street from each other. And it'll be the one on the right hand side. Rest in peace, Jennifer. Now this story involves multiple people, all of them very, very young teenagers, which kind of sets the stage for what transpired that terrible night. So Jennifer Bolander, who is 16 years old, she was hanging out with several friends. One of them was Kyle Cummings, who was 15, and Daniel Pardy, who was 19. They were all hanging out at a bowling alley in Niagara Falls, New York, on the night of December 13th, 2002. They were hanging out, having a good time at the bowling alley, and when they wrapped up their bowling, they all decided to walk home. And along the way, walking home, Kyle stated, of course, later to police that his friend Daniel tried to kiss Jennifer but she resisted his advances. Daniel got very upset that she refused to kiss him, and so he ended up punching Jennifer and knocking her to the ground. Him and Kyle then repeatedly punched and stomped on Jennifer, of course, as she's begging for her life. At this point, both Kyle and Daniel left Jennifer bleeding profusely and left her for dead. They both walked to Kyle's house and they both decided to return to quote unquote clean up some evidence. However, when they returned, they were startled to find out that Jennifer was actually still alive. They brought along with them Kyle's brother named Christopher and all three of them drug Jennifer's body nearly 100 feet up this pedestrian bridge and according to police they finished her off Christopher took a large knife and ended up slashing Jennifer's throat from ear to ear after that Daniel then stabbed her 49 times to make sure she was actually dead so after all was said and done all three teenagers participated in murdering Poor Jennifer, again, for absolutely no reason except for the fact that Jennifer refused to kiss one of them earlier in the day. Just an absolutely horrific way to go for Jennifer, considering two of the three young teenagers were the last people to see Jennifer alive. They, of course, became pretty quickly the number one suspects. They were brought into the police station and, of course, gave some interviews of what happened that night. All three of them were eventually charged with her murder. Now, Kyle Cummings eventually agreed to a plea deal in court, and he pled guilty to a charge of second-degree murder and agreed to testify against his brother, Christopher, and Daniel Pardy. Now, keep in mind, Kyle's brother was the one who used one of the knives to stab 
Jennifer. Sounds like Kyle didn't actually use the knife, um, according to the reports I'm reading, but he, of course, was there and participated in stomping on her earlier, so in a way, he did have a hand in her death, of course. What is interesting is Kyle Cummings, because he got that plea deal, he received a sentence of six years up to life in prison. Frustratingly enough, he was released from prison October of 2019 after serving 17 years of that sentence. Now, of course, the other two young teenagers were also tried and convicted of their crimes. Now, what's interesting, though, about Kyle is the fact that, as I said, he was released October of 2019. However, it did not take very long for him to find himself in trouble with the law. In June of 2020, he was charged with two counts of second-degree sexual assault, one count of second-degree sexual abuse, as well as one count of third-degree sexual abuse, and also one count of endangering the welfare of a child. Again, if Kyle was still in prison... For killing Jennifer, he would not have been able to commit these other terrible crimes. There was multiple incidents involving Kyle and a juvenile victim not long after his release from prison. Feel terrible for what happened to her. Again, these were her friends. So I'm sure in her wildest dreams, she would not have thought that they would have harmed her in any way. And especially for refusing to kiss one of them. I just feel like that is just the dumbest reason to to hurt someone over, let alone murder someone over. Anyway, guys, I'm going to head out of here. As always, I have more cases coming up. Make sure you stay tuned for Friday's video on my channel. If you're new around here, make sure you subscribe. Turn the bell icon on. That way you get notified of each video coming out. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.